Well, hello and good Monday morning. This is not going to be a heavy one. Uh, I think that we just need to have a little discussion about a very minor issue that some people have made a very major issue over the years. What do you call your religious leader? Uh, there are churches that have a lot of fights about this. I grew up in a church where it was absolutely forbidden not only to call your minister reverend, but even somebody else's minister who was called that. Let's say that down at the Methodist Church, there was a Reverend Smith. And if they came by, you had to call them Mr., but you could never call them Reverend. And the reason was, in the scripture back in the Old Testament, it says, holy and reverend is your name, talking about God. Therefore, the name Reverend was not allowed uh, ever among human beings. And we were, to, we were to actively disapprove when we heard that. You know, cringe a bit, frown a bit, look down a bit, that sort of thing. Um, problem is that saying holy and reverend is the name of God does not mean that no other person deserves reverence or honor. Um, in fact, we're all called to, called to be holy, uh, so you would think there, and to live reverent lives. So do I want to be called reverend? No, I really don't. And, and the reason is I don't think I live up to that title. I'm not sure um, what all the qualifications would be, but my degrees are in science, and but my life wrestling with God and following Jesus, and this this strange cosmic dance that we've got with Scripture and God, that's my th those are my only qualifications, and so no, let's um, let's let other people have that, but I'm not even so sure that my life is as reverent as it ought to be. You know, I I contend toward um, sarcasm. I can tend toward negativity if I don't really buckle down and fight myself daily. I, 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 don't, I just don't think I get that title. Well, in our church, we were also not allowed to call people uh, pastor. It, with a very rare exception, we were told that if you were an elder, which is the same as a bishop or a presbyter in scripture, and the, the minister, you could be called pastor. Now, the evidence for that sort of specificity and legal requirements is really lacking in scripture. I know where the verses are, you can go ahead and send them to me, but I, there's no indication there that God was making a law. Pastor is a word that comes from the pastoral or someone who leads, someone who leads a flock, a group. Now when we call a flock, you know, the, our flock, that's, we're not calling people sheep. What we're doing is accepting the reality of what God has given us, and that is sheep have to follow you. You can't drive them. And if you put ropes around them and pull them after, you will kill them. If you drive them, they will scatter and some will d just die. They have to learn to trust the voice of the shepherd, their pastor. Uh, in fact, in the wilds of Scotland, and I'm sure this is true elsewhere, I've just never been in a, you know, a whole lot of other uh, places where sheep intensive uh, farming took place. The sheep are out on the hills and the sheep actually can differentiate between the sounds of the different shepherds' trucks. This guy's Land Rover goes out and the sheep start moving toward it. It's, it's just brilliant. So somebody who leads a group of followers of Jesus and they follow him or her, they are being a pastor. In fact, um, taking a risk here, there, there are some publications that come out from a church, the church in which I was raised, that, that particular denomination, that would say absolutely no. You can call the minister or evangelist. Normally, they would say, we don't do religious titles, do we, Brother Patrick? <laughs> so, and Brother sometimes was even uh, shortened to capital B R O period. And I'm going, well, that, that's a title, you know, it, it's a reality. We are brothers and sisters, but the inconsistency, um, but the, the church in which I was raised, uh, absolutely forbade anybody being called reverend, as I've said, but also pastor. Well, that particular religious group has a paper that comes out every month. And it's actually a really good paper. They try very hard just to say the news of what's going on rather than becoming embroiled in um, labeling others and you know left, right, and so they, they, 
they do a good job. But then there are ads for the ministers. Some of the ads blow my mind. Now the ad I'm about to read, and I'm going to edit out all of the information so you, nobody listening to this can know where the police was. This is from a church that would say, we don't have, we don't have pastors and we don't have reverence, reverence. We don't have, we don't have guys in charge, but they're looking for a minister to help reestablish the church ministries and programs, reclaim inactive members, revamp the financial operations and its leadership structure, and launch successful evangelism and stewardship campaigns. The scope of work includes preaching Sunday, conducting, conducting Bible classes Wednesday, attending special church activities, conducting weddings and funerals, being accessible to members during their illnesses, upon deaths and family, during other tragedies and situations, leading the church administrative staff, keeping office hours, performing other duties pertaining to the position. One person? Well, they, the, these people do exist. And if you do find them, they are a pastor or they are a CEO or COO, chief operating officer. But you can't just call them an employee. If you treat them as an employee, but these are their responsibilities, you are giving them a ton of responsibilities with no actual power, which is why most churches of, of all stripes are experiencing serious difficulties in keeping ministers because whenever they have all the responsibility, but none of the power, well, that's a problem. Well, then you give them power, but then you won't let them be called what they do. They call me pastor. Most people just call me Patrick, by the way, and that's fine. I don't need to be called doctor. I don't need to be called pastor. I'm Patrick. I know who I am. I'm just Bill and Catherine's son. But if people call me pastor, okay, you know why? Because that's what I do. We have people in over 30 nations now. We've kind of lost count. We know we're in the 30s. Uh, until they check in, we don't know where they are. So we could be in many other countries. We have, have had viewers from 50 states check in. We don't know how many states are weekly viewers. And by the way, I've, I find time and time again that people like to binge. You know, they're not weekly, but they'll come and they'll, they'll watch four Monday morning messages, you know, at the same time. Or they will actually all day while they're driving somewhere across Kansas or something, they'll listen to just a ton of the midweek Bible studies. And, and that's cool. That's cool. So I can't say how many every week, but there are thousands and thousands. And these people are, in, uh, half of my church is always awake. So I'm getting emails, I'm getting notifications, I'm getting questions, and that's fine. I love this work but I'm pastoring. It's what I'm doing. So it's all right to call me that if you want to, but you don't have to. What other names are being used? Some, um, we, of course, Protestants don't use the name father. As a rule, uh, you can find exceptions. Why not? Well, they, they generally will go to the passage where Jesus says, call no man father on your earth, because you, you only have one father and it's he who is in heaven. That would seem to be definitive. He was speaking to the Jewish people before his death and his resurrection, before the new covenant came completely into force as we understand it. Um, but let's not even argue that part. When I was a boy, I wondered, well then, when it asked me if my father's alive, what can I say? Or who my father is, or if I'm doing a medical history or getting one done rather on me. I'm, I'm not a medical doctor. If I'm having a medical history done on me and they say, you know, list the things that your father had or has, am I supposed to be, well, my father is perfect beyond all things. He is God. Now, if you're talking about the sperm donor or daddy, no, no. Jesus was making a point to them. They had gone around grabbing people, almost entirely men, and just whatever that person said, that was what, where they were going. So. Those people had fathers in the faith, and Jesus said, you need to aim up a lot higher than this. You need to aim it for God. That said, uh, I, I am uncomfortable uh, if a Catholic priest wants me to call him father. And it must be said, I've not run into one yet 
that is upset if I call them by their name. Not one. When I tell them, you know, it may be absolutely fine for me to call you Father McNary, but um, I, I'm just, for some reason, I'm uncomfortable, and could I just call you Ted, you know, and you call me Patrick. I have not found a single one that hesitated at all about that. All of them were good-natured about it. So that, you know, be aware, all right? Don't be afraid just to say, hey, listen, can we come to an agreement here? I think that would, I think you might be surprised how agreeable people are. My mother calls me a preacher. When she was um, pregnant with me, which the doctor told her she couldn't have any more children, and she told the doctor, yes, I will, because I want a son so he can be a preacher. In our church, the girls couldn't, and she'd had girls. And so she prayed the prayer of Hannah. She was promising, like Hannah was Samuel, that she would hand me back to God. And I thank God for those prayers. Uh, I'm here, and I'm glad that I'm here, and I'm glad that I'm doing what I do. But in her world, doing what I do is called preaching. I don't think I'm a preacher. Now, I know that the definitions are not set in stone. And don't run to Merriam-Webster for everything. And people define words by what they mean when they say them. All right? It's, we, we, try, we try to standardize English, but man, is it tough. But if you listen to me on Sundays, I don't feel like I'm preaching at you. I think I'm just talking. I'm just telling a story. Uh, somebody asked me once, where do you get the inspiration for all your stories like uh, we're doing now? You know, we've covered people from Judas to Mary. And they're saying, how did you? I get excited about the stories. and I pay attention to what is there and what is not there. Might want to look at last week for a discussion of what is not there and why that might shift the way you phrase things. I get excited about these things. And whenever I speak on, on a Sunday, it's out of the overflow of what I'm reading and working on personally. I don't sit around and think, all right, these people need some preaching and they need to be brought along and they, I, need to, I need to make sure they're, I don't know, no. Because no. I don't want anybody doing that at me. If you're preaching at me, I don't tend to hear much. As soon as people's voices get loud or sound angry, I have an internal switch that just, and that, that could very well be a fault in me, but it's a reality. But if somebody is just speaking or telling a story or revealing a new thing to me, oh, I'm all ears. I'm ready. My eyes are wide open and I'm leaning forward. So I don't think I'm a preacher. Some call me minister. You know, I hope so. I hope I'm a minister. I hope I'm serving you. I hope I'm serving my wife, my dear wife, my grandkids, my kids. I hope I'm serving my neighbors. I hope I serve our safe harbor. I really want to be a servant, but I sometimes feel uncomfortable with the name minister because frankly, there, there's a lot of selfishness in me. Uh, there, there can even be a laziness in me. And I know after all the work I do, people say, what? No, I can sometimes just enjoy sitting doing nothing when really something needs to be done. And yes, I know about Sabbath. We need to take Sabbath. I'm not trying to beat myself up here. I'm trying to be realistic, all right? Most religious titles make me a little uncomfortable. Well, what about brother? You know, that one doesn't bother me a bit because wherever you are on the planet, whoever you are, no matter what you pray to or if you pray at all, I am your brother, for we have the same Father. Almighty God created you in his image and he created me in his image. So yes, I'll be your brother. Yes, I am a pastor because that's what I do. I pastor pretty much all day long. I'll sometimes see the title evangelist. I think we're doing that. Evangelist means a carrier forward of the good news. And in modern English parlance, it generally means somebody who goes from place to place preaching to convert people. I actually do speak and tell the stories. Can, can I be really honest here? My goal is not so much to convert people, but to tell them the stories and then let God do with it what he will with that person. 
So we don't do any of those altar calls or invitation songs or got to come up here and sign the cards or be baptized really quick or kneel down and pray. We don't do that. Instead, we just we open up and lay out Jesus and then we let Jesus touch the heart and the Holy Spirit move you and the Father draw you. Seems to be working, but I'm not opposed to evangelists. I'm not opposed to people calling themselves any of these names. But I thought you might want to think about it on a Monday morning. Have a great week. You, by being a believer, are a priest of God. Peter said so. Go out and introduce people to Jesus through kindness and love. And a story or two. Cheers.